Hey y'all, welcome to today's lesson. Today's lesson is on utilizing the photocopy filter. Now I remember the days before uh, photocopiers when we actually had one of those MIMI machines and they, our, photo, our copies were all uh, purple back um, when I was in high school. And I remember when we first got the, the real photocopies uh, photocopiers and what it was like and suddenly one day you thought I wonder what it would be like to stick my hand or my um, face even on that photocopier and you began thinking what else can we stick on that photocopier and uh, I remember then uh, when my children were little thinking oh to have a snapshot of their hand and we used to stick their hand on the photocopier and, and get a photo of that and it'd be like a little snapshot of the size of their hand at the age they were and I'm wondering what kind of principles um, we can use with this photocopy filter um, you know it might be kind of fun if my children were little to take a photo of their hand and use this filter and make a page that way um, call it snapshot in time or something I don't know uh, that thought just kind of came to me uh, but here's the layout that I did and, and using this filter is actually fairly simple I decided to make a background with mine and um, you'll see here that um, I ran the photocopier on one of the layers and then just duplicated it and moved it around and that's how I got these uh, little lines um, on my background. So I just duplicated them and moved them around to make a background. Um, I suppose you could, uh, you know, merge them all together and then run the photocopy filter on them. But let's go uh, find, I'm assuming, yeah, this is an original photo that I have setting here. So always duplicate things to uh, keep that extra there. Let's turn off some of this stuff so we can focus on what the filter does. So the reason I have the line on mine is I actually kept the line from the edge of the photo on my scanned in version. This is a photo of me and my brother when we were little and uh, my journaling is all about the way I'm sticking out my tongue and uh, uh, so let's get right into it. The photocopy filter I do not think matters what background or uh, foreground color that you have, but it is found under the filter drop down menu and then sketch and photocopy and it does bring up the filter gallery. And when you have recording software running, it takes a little while for things to come up. I'm going to go ahead and, and zoom out. I'm not at 100%. What is it, about 25%? 33%? Kind of gets me my photo. Now, right now, on the last settings I was using, I had this all the way over. But I'm not sure where the default settings are. But you have two options on your slider, either detail or darkness and um, you can utilize these and, and um, move them back and forth until you get something that you like. I think for my background paper, see I didn't, I, I made this so long ago, I don't remember what it, I did with it, but um, I think I didn't want uh, anything to be real defined because I was going to use it as my background paper and I didn't want it to be the focal point um, gain too much focal weight uh, as you've learned in a lot of my lessons and so I kept the sliders pretty far to the left and made something really soft and then clicked OK and uh, let's see if we call up Uh, let's find a good one, a good positioning for one of them. And 
this one. And so here, here's the original that I did, and you can see I made it even a little softer uh, than what we just ran this one. Um, it was pretty soft when I did it. Actually, to soften this up, I suppose, uh, you could even go in and grab your Gaussian Blur tool and and just blur it up just a little bit. See, and that even makes it a lot nicer. Um, and makes it, uh, maybe that's what I did a long time ago because it does look very similar. And so um, that's all I did to make my background photo and uh, repeated it. Uh, but let's um, I'll go ahead and and turn all this back on so you can peek again at mine and so that's what I did and then I used my original photo and a lot of journaling but let's look at another way that you can utilize this I've got this crazy looking thing going on here um, you can utilize the photocopy filter actually as a stained glass uh, effect and I tell you it's really hard you've got to find a photo that has a lot of changing colors in it um, uh, like a bunch of different colored fruit together in a bowl or um, you, it works better if you have a photo that has larger chunks of color but you could use this technique on on any photo you know we're, we're being artistic here we're stretching our minds and uh, coming out with something unique but let me show you some techniques that you can do to get a more of a stained glass look and I didn't finish this here but because I was just playing but here's my original photo in fact we could ditch these two and I was playing with here's my original photo I'm gonna control J to copy it and, and turn off that original one just to keep it safe go to the filter menu blur Gaussian blur and I'm gonna raise that blur up to around 10 maybe and uh, you can see what I've got going on here now I'm going to run that um, photocopy filter on this and when I run it on this let's see I need to really back out um, you see the settings that I used before where the sliders are all the way to the right are not uh, working well with this. It's too uh, faded. I mean, you could do something like this and use it as a whole background, something like this. Um, use that as a whole background to your layout and then maybe put the real photo right up here in the white area to let this show through. That'd be cool. But we're making a stained glass window. So I'm going to bring the detail all the way to the right because I really want all those lines to show up. And I'm going to click OK. Um, now what I'm going to do is grab this original layer again and I'm going to duplicate it again and, and let's make it visible. And um, on this top layer let's change it to a multiplied blending mode and you see we're already beginning to get the stained glass look feel but the lines um, in the photo such as the lines in these roof you wouldn't see that in a uh, stained glass so you need to get this that you're blending it with and go ahead and run that Gaussian blur on it and get rid of those lines. Now, I, that running it once got rid of it for the most part, but I'm going to run it several times. Blur things up. Now, the other thing it is with stained glass, you're not going to have, you're going to have more uh, finite lines. Um, so you want to take your eraser tool and, and I've got too much going on in this photo this isn't really a good photo for this technique if you really want to have the, the stained glass effect I'd have to work a whole lot for it but um, go up here to your photocopy layer and you know erase out a lot of these lines and you know for a stained glass you have pieces of glass that are together and so you could go back and get your brush 
and uh, you probably want to get a um, hard brush and you could go back and, and fill in these lines so you'd have to do a whole lot of work with your eraser tool and your brush tool to really make this a uh, stained uh, glass effect uh, more accurate. You could see this is already looking in here like it's uh, stained glass. And so um, for this particular photo, I went a little too far <laughs> up into the line. For this particular photo, it would take a lot of tedious, uh, I don't even need this here. Uh, tedious work to change this into a stained glass um, and uh, you know for instance here in this pool a lot of this stuff would not be you know here in a stained glass you would have more of a you know a finite uh, look so you would want to erase a bunch of this stuff that's in here in fact, all of this stuff you would probably want to erase. And then, oops, I went too far. It's okay. I'm grab, whoops, I'm grabbing my brush anyway. Uh, make my brush a little larger and finish this line off a little better. So you would have to go through and do that, you know, for the entire photo. And I'm not going to sit here and do this. I'm just giving you the idea of how this would uh, work. I'm using my bracket keys to make my brush a little bit um, smaller and larger as I need to. But um, you could see here in um, this uh, slide area how that really looks like a stained glass I'm not sure how you do this water area um, you can make it more like a stained glass or you could use the same effect as I just did and uh, just utilize that concept because we're being artistic and thinking outside of the box and I wanted to show you how you could do this and I think this would be really cool as a stained glass with some kind of quote up here um, you know, I might even want to block out this whole, I just, I'm trying to think of what I would do. You know, where this water is, I would probably just delete all of this stuff and, you know, maybe if I was more artistic, just draw my own stained glass lines in it to make it look more like a real stained glass window my lines are probably my brush is probably too thick I don't know I might do that or I, I kind of liked it the way it was before but anyway I'm just trying to give you some ideas so let's see what you can come up with and have fun with this one.